Kyle Larson will attempt next year's Indianapolis 500. Jimmy Johnson reveals his Daytona 500 paint scheme. And 2311 Racing is teasing something potentially huge. <laughs> How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Happy Friday. This week has been one for the ages. A week absolutely packed full of major NASCAR news. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to hit that button down below. The season is right around the corner. Stay in the loop on all things stock car racing. Hit that subscribe button down below. I greatly appreciate it. Several big stories to hit on. Let's start with Jimmy Johnson. Of course, this week's been a busy week for Jimmy Johnson. Revealed the new name of Petty GMS Legacy Motor Club. Johnson driving the 84 beginning this year at the Daytona 500. Yesterday, Jimmy Johnson and his sponsor, Carvana, revealed his Daytona 500 paint scheme. Here's what it looks like. I, I like it. Dark blue, but some light blue little accents, little streaks and stripes on fenders, different body features on this car. Looks really, really cool. I know some are surprised to see Carvana follow Jimmy Johnson now back to NASCAR, but they're here, at least for the Daytona 500. It's good for them. The Daytona 500 is just over a month away, but Jimmy Johnson will get some seat time before then. Jimmy Johnson will participate in the test at Phoenix Raceway January 24th and 25th. This is meant to be kind of a short track aero test. Uh, drivers Ross Chastain, Christopher Bell, Joey Logano, Ricky Stenhouse, Brad Keselowski, and Eric Jones, I believe, will all be there representing their teams and manufacturers testing, as well as Jimmy Johnson. And this tweet here from Jeff Gluck of The Athletic explains, NASCAR will allow Jimmy Johnson to do a test at Phoenix under the select driver test rules used for Kimi Raikkonen later this month. Johnson will be testing at the same time as six other cars, a NASCAR test, but will be on his own testing plan. Phoenix, Daytona, really no similarities, but this will be Jimmy's first experience behind the wheel of a NASCAR Cup Series ready next gen car. I believe the only other next gen experience Johnson has was testing the Garage 56 Le Mans entry, which is kind of souped up, it's got some edits made to it. It's not exactly what NASCAR races on Sundays these days. So any seat time for Jimmy Johnson uh, before the Daytona 500 is important. Uh, we still don't know what other cup races he will race in this year. Sounds like Jimmy Johnson is still working on that schedule himself. But we know he's running the Daytona 500 in this Carvana Chevrolet. Very, very exciting. Man, speed week or speed four or five days? <laughs> Can't get here soon enough. Now, we've actually got some breaking news here coming in hot. Earlier this afternoon, 2311 Racing released a... Uh, a teaser video indicating they plan on entering a third car into this year's Daytona 500. The team has not provided any additional information besides this silhouette of some sort of car. That's not a NASCAR stock car, I know that much. And this shot of the back of someone's head. That's it. So, of course, social media did its thing. It speculated on any potential candidate under the sun. From Carl Edwards to Red Farmer. Well, okay, no, I didn't actually see anyone predicting Red Farmer, but I did see a lot of Carl Edwards predictions, and I'm, and I'm so sorry, Carl Edwards fans, that we have to go through this every year or two. There's some rumor, there's some speculation, and it always comes up empty. I'll give you this. The photo did kind of sort of look like Carl Edwards, but... Guys, Carl Edwards isn't coming back. Why would he come back now? When he retired, he cited you know, his health as a reason why he wanted to step away. He was healthy. The next gen car just ended someone's career a year early, effectively. I mean, that's basically what it did to Kurt Busch. So why would Carl Edwards come back to race that car at Daytona? It just doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, Carl Edwards fans. I don't mean to pile on. It would have been cool to see Carl Edwards come back even for a one-off, but that's not the case because tonight, Jordan Bianchi of The Athletic is reporting Travis Pastrana will drive a third 2311 entry in this year's Daytona 500. Bianchi writes that an announcement is expected next week. Sorry, 2311. Sorry, Denny Hamlin. This is one driver announcement that you weren't able to beat the media to. I'm sure they won't be happy that this information was leaked. But to be fair, I don't know who initially posted this photo, but a few of you guys shared it with me on Twitter. Here's a photo of Travis Pastrana wearing probably the exact same hat as he's wearing in that 2311 video. So the fans were starting to figure it out already. But yeah, action sports star Travis Pastrana is going to run the Daytona 500. 
I, I guess that's cool. Very random. I mean, Pastrana does have NASCAR experience. He raced in the Xfinity series like a decade ago. And actually just a couple years ago in 2020, he made, I think two starts in the truck series for Nice Motorsports. So uh, he's been around uh, fairly recently, but still a, a random choice. Uh, I'm sure there's some sponsorship connected to it. The money was too good to pass up on. It's a splashy name for sure. And Daytona, I mean, anyone can be competitive at Daytona in a decent car, and 2311 is going to give them a decent car. So a random pairing, a random announcement, but cool. Go for it. I'm not sure what the car count is looking like now. We got 36 chartered cars, a Pastrana, presumably. I think Elio Cashnevis is still looking for a, a Daytona 500 seat. I think it was back in November, Adam Stern reported that a track house and the money team were the two leading candidates there. So maybe that one of those deals will still happen. I don't know. Obviously, Jimmy Johnson's another open car. So there's a good chance we'll have over 40 entries, which means uh, someone's going home. Pressure will be on uh, Thursday before the 500. Lastly, let's talk about Kyle Larson and the Indianapolis 500, the 2024 Indianapolis 500. That's right, almost a year and a half away. Yesterday, Kyle Larson announced that he will race the 2024 Indianapolis 500 in an Aero McLaren entry co-owned by Rick Hendrick. What's up, Indy 500 2024 for McLaren and HendrickCars.com. Huge thank you to everybody involved. This has been a dream of mine and my family's for a very long time. This is awesome news. Kyle Larson would be, I think, just the fifth driver ever to attempt the Indy 500 Coca-Cola 600 double in the same day. The most recent guy to do it was Kurt Busch in 2014. And remember, he finished remarkably in sixth at Indy and then blew a motor, had a mechanical failure in the uh, NASCAR race, unfortunately. This is huge news, though, if you're an American racing fan. It's a long ways off, I know, but Kyle Larson, the past couple couple of years has been arguably the most exciting thing on four wheels. He's won just about every major dirt racing event under the sun. Doesn't matter if it's been sprint cars, late models, you name it. NASCAR, his first year with Hendrick, he won 10 races and the championship and the all-star race. 2022, he cooled off just a little bit, but was still you know, won multiple races, was still a threat to win the championship until the last few weeks. He's still a great race car driver now in his prime and arguably is the greatest race car driver in North America currently. I think that's a real debate that other people could have. I'm not gonna have that right here, right now. So to get that guy in the Indianapolis 500, one of the biggest motorsports events in the entire world every year, that's awesome. That's awesome for IndyCar. I know they have to be celebrating. This is a huge name who's gonna bring more NASCAR eyeballs, dirt racing eyeballs to their event. But even if you're NASCAR, I mean, this is a chance to put one of your brightest superstars on a massive stage. I don't think NASCAR has a problem with that whatsoever. 2024 is still a long ways off, so it sucks that we have to wait a while to see Kyle Larson attempt the Indianapolis 500. Zach Brown, you know, head of McLaren, had this to say about Larson and about why they announced it so early. He said, quote, we're going to get Larson preparation, whether that is simulation, driving the car himself, attending some IndyCar races, and sitting in debriefs. Obviously, Kyle's primary program is Kyle's quest for another NASCAR championship, and we want to work around what will be a very busy schedule for him. We want to immerse Kyle and work together with Hendrick to maximize performance both on and off the track. We are now working through how many test days that includes and where we can test. Chevrolet's new tech center is around the corner from Hendrick Motorsports. It will be a benefit. One of the reasons for an early announcement and early commitment was for maximum preparation. Well, they're gonna have nearly a year and a half to get ready for 500 miles around the yard of bricks. I'm really excited this happened. I'm excited that Rick Hendrick has signed off on it. You know, when Kyle Larson was first you know, reported to go to Hendrick, everyone was wondering what's this gonna mean for his dirt career, all of his extracurriculars. Hendrick Motorsports historically has been a little restrictive on that front. They haven't been with Larson, and I think it's made him a better driver. He's run just about every dirt race he wants. He's won a lot of NASCAR races in the meantime. And now Rick Hendrick is co-signing on Larson's Indy 500 efforts. I'm sure there are Hendrick fans that wish Jeff Gordon would have had this opportunity or gone and run the Indianapolis 500. I guess you know, we've now seen Jimmy Johnson run the Indy 500, but Kyle Larson, I think, is a great name to represent NASCAR in the Indianapolis 500. Will any other drivers join him? It is a year and a half away. I mean, maybe Kyle Busch? That's another name I think everyone would like to see attempt the Indy 500 at some point. Heck, if more drivers go, maybe they could all share, you know, planes or helicopter rides to and from Charlotte. <laughs> Motor Speedway for the 600. I don't know. Save on airfare. <laughs> I don't know. Get a group on. <laughs> I don't know. But let me know what you think down below. It's early, so hard to really say 
say too, too much, but I'm excited. I'm very enthusiastic about Kyle Larson and his chances to contend at Indianapolis. He's got to make the race first. I understand that's easier said than done, but if he gets in, I think he has a real shot to make some noise at Indianapolis in 2024. But thank you guys for watching. Leave your comments down in the comment section below. I look forward to reading them. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave it a like. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content. As always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters as well for your continued and very generous support. Have a wonderful weekend, y'all. I will likely see you on Monday, but if more news like this continues to spill out, I will talk to you much sooner than that. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday. I'll see y'all again soon.